Hey everyone. So I want to continue an idea that we started talking about last week. Last week, I brought up this conversation that Moshe has with Hashem where he's saying, I just, I'm not good at talking. And Hashem's kind of perplexing answer. You know, I said that, that, well, you know, Hashem is our father. And as a parent, wouldn't your instinct be to try to just, you know, make Moshe feel better. Like, Moshe, you're not so bad at talking or, or just to fix this problem. Like, okay, Moshe, I'm Hashem. Of course I can take away your problem. But Hashem's answer is very surprising. He says, who do you think gives people their challenges and their impediments? Now, last week, we saw that appear one time. But in this portion, Moshe's concern about his speech impediment comes up another two times. And in each time, Hashem's answer is surprising and different. So what I want to suggest is that these three appearances of Moshe's concern about his inability to bear the task that Hashem is putting on him is sort of a roadmap for what Hashem is trying to teach us about facing this in life. Because Moshe's speech impediment is really a paradigm for all of those times that we feel like the path Hashem is sending us on, it's just it's too heavy. It's too hard. I can't do this, right? And you say to Hashem, I can't do this. I just don't have what it takes. I'm not good enough. And Moshe says this to Hashem three times. And I want to kind of take a bird's eye view at these answers and see the path that it's putting out before us for how to handle that situation. So as we talked about last week, the first time Hashem Bemet says, Hashem truly says, well, you know, I'm the one who gives a person their challenge in life. Meaning, Step one is to recognize that your shortcomings are nothing to be ashamed of or afraid of, but rather they are the sort of set of skills and challenges that Hashem has given you in life that are perfectly matched to what you need to do. But then that's not enough for Moshe. Because in this week's Parsha, because in this week's Parsha, Hashem says to him, well, now it's time to go to Paro. And once again, he says, but I can't, I'm not a good speaker. I don't know how to speak. Now this second time where Moshe brings this up, it looks in the verses as if Hashem is just ignoring him. There's no answer. And many of the commentaries say, well, why doesn't Hashem answer him? But when I was looking in the verses, something very strange happens. It's true that Hashem doesn't give him a direct answer like thus spoke Hashem to Moshe. But right after that, just one, you know, if you skip one verse later, out of nowhere, in the middle of this dialogue about Moshe and Aaron having to go to speak to Paro to free the Israelites, out of nowhere, suddenly the Torah starts to list the names of the generations. It says, these are the heads of the houses of Israel. And it starts to go through all of the different, you know, leaders of the tribes. And it seems totally out of place because right after that list finishes, it goes right back to the story of Moshe and Aaron going to Pharaoh. What is that? Suddenly it hit me. Maybe that is Hashem's quiet answer to Moshe's question. Because Hashem said, because Moshe said, I can't do this. Hashem doesn't seem to answer him, but Hashem gives a list of the ancestors and the forefathers. Maybe that's another piece of this puzzle. Like when you think about it, every single person that is alive today is alive because there are countless people before us that survived in unbelievable hardship. Like the fact that I am sitting here right now means that I had ancestors who were willing to sacrifice to give birth to my ancestors, you know, that came after them, to give birth, to feed them, to sacrifice their, their energy, their sleep, their food, their money, whatever they had. I mean, the amount that went into you or me sitting here is just unbelievable. So the fact that we are alive means that we come from greatness just by the virtue of the fact that we're sitting here. And, you know, and that, that's, that's, you know, that's something to draw strength from because somebody thought that you were worth fighting for and worth sacrificing for to be here. And we can look back at what our ancestors went through, which is just so unfathomable and draw strength from that. And it's also, you know, a forward facing guidance. I've been thinking a lot lately about how open are we to our children's questions when they need guidance. It's like the Torah is saying, you know, our children are going to have times, you know, if, if Hashem is our father and, and his treatment of Moshe is like a paradigm for us also as parents, are we always as open as we could be 
for our children to feel that they can come and ask us questions. I cannot tell you how many people in this very fellowship have said to me, oh, when I was growing up, they didn't like me. I asked too many questions. Or in my community that I used to be part of, they didn't like me much because I had a lot of hard questions. The fundamental, you know, culture of Judaism is to encourage questions from the younger generation to the older generation. Like when we have the, you know, the Seder on Passover, the main kind of story there, the, 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 the fundamental narrative of that night is how do we get our children to ask us questions? The songs are the children asking questions. The stories are about children asking questions to their parents. You know, the, the story of the four sons and how each one of them asks their questions to their parents in different ways. Are we, you know, always promoting to our, you know, opening ourselves up for our children to always know that they can ask us anything. The best thing my mom ever did to me when I was growing up, and I always tell her this, is that when I was growing up, my mom said to me, you might think that you're a weirdo. You might think you have a question that's so weird, no one's ever thought of such a stupid question before. But I promise you, however stupid your questions are, I've thought of something stupider. So you can always ask me whatever seems to you to be the weirdest, stupidest question you can think of. And that was so heart opening for me. So, you know, I feel like that's the second guidance is when you feel like you can't handle it, we draw strength from the people that came before us and we pass that on to our children that they can draw strength from our life experience and our wisdom and they can always turn to us. But that's not enough for Moshe again. Moshe then a third time says, Hashem, I just can't do this. And then what does Hashem say? He says, let me tell you, I'm going to harden Paro's heart. Meaning, you think you have problems? Here's the good news. It's going to get worse. You know, it's like Hashem is saying, your fears, they're not unfounded. Things are going to be rough. Hashem is giving him a realistic expectation. You think, you know, that I'm Hashem, so I'm sending you on this mission and it's just going to be successful. It's not going to be successful. Before you're successful, you're going to crash and burn. You're going to crash and burn so hard because the people are going to be mad at you and everything is going to go terrible. But then from that, will come out the redemption. It's like we talk about this a lot, you know, like Abraham's experiences. He follows Hashem, he goes to the land, and then there's a famine. Jeremy and I talk about this often, like we, you know, came to the farm and then get smacked with lawsuits from, you know, these, from, from, from left-wing European organizations. It's like Hashem is saying, yes, at that moment where you feel like you can't handle it, it might go bad for a while, but you have the expectation and you know that that's part of it. You draw strength from knowing that after that, there, Hashem has a plan and it will lead eventually to the redemption. And I was sharing this with my friend Jesse over Shabbat, sort of this reading, and he said that what he hears when Hashem is answering Moshe is saying, the outcome is not on you, that's on me. You know what you need to do? You need to show up. With everything you are, your shortcomings and your you know, your blessings, your things that are, you know, the, the, your talents and the things that are your handicaps. You show up with all of that, but you have one job, and that is to show up on your mission. The outcome, that's on Hashem. And so it's like these three times that Moshe comes to Hashem with his insecurity, together Hashem's answers, although they seem perplexing at first, can be sort of a holistic guide for us on how to approach that kind of feeling that I know that at least happens to me a lot, and I bet for a lot of you as well. So with that, I wish you guys a great week and be well.